context to pursue applied research. So some of the methods have changed, but the, but the objective is pretty much as it was when I joined it in the 80s. But my academic friends report things are very different for them in universities. These days, the major funding bodies are uh, still governments, but they tend to decide uh, sort of directional themes, often agreed internationally. And basically, if your research falls into one of those themes, you might get funded. And if it doesn't, you, you, you literally will be starved out because the only other source of funding are large private institutions. So in, in Britain, for example, the biggest one is the Medical Research Council, which is basically public money. And the next one is the, the Wellcome Trust, which is a very large uh, endowment and is used to, to drive research that's of interest to its, to, it, to its management. And so, you know, basically over time and more recently, academic researchers pretty much have to toe the line. So if there are certain, you know, thematic areas that are being pursued by uh, private funding or, or endowments and, and scholarships and so on that comes from private foundations, those are the areas you have to work in. And it becomes quite difficult. Independent research is not only not supported, it's often not tolerated. And that's exactly the crack that I went through. I fell through that crack. OK, and I was lucky. I was I was good enough right, to be able to maintain my own research program independently. Right? You can look at my you can look at my research. I was across multiple labs. OK, and then they got to my own lab. OK, but I was doing my research and, and it wasn't it wasn't for other people. OK, so I had a program where I was able to go through and I could develop the techniques and the uh, the ability to be able to think across all these different aspects, because one, I've been screwed over a whole bunch of times. Right? Uh, I, could, I could write a book about it. I might just do that when this is finished, just about what a bunch of cunts academia really is and how they're nothing but chinless fucking wokelings. And um, I, I got through to I got through to this phase. Now, there, I was at the, at, at the path, the branching path, but as a decision was made for me, OK, that I could I could live in the in the vertical gulag and have the. Uh, the the ego boosting fictive reality of uh, an institutional position, okay, or I could I could get down more towards nature and base reality, and here I am uh, with my family, trying to trying to eke out uh, a, a bit of survival, okay, trying to bring up three young kids, and my my career has gone. He's had his, he's got his fucking pensions. Right. And I've had I've had to blow mine right right before I, I could build anything approximating the, the wealth that's promised to you should you be successful in this game. But I, I had a moral and ethical imperative to speak up because I could see that the public were being lied to about the science that, that was that was being pushed to the public. OK, and. The, the light and I'm bloody sure of this. They know it's from a lab. They know that it's an agent that's potentially um, harmful, probably de attenuating because they hadn't quite figured that bit out. Maybe if that's what they're, if that's what they're thinking, where the research was, where they were all sharing and pretending to be playing the same game. But. Behind that, someone's thinking, well, we can work down at a more fundamental level and we can get to a point where we can induce, we can, in, we can make an infective, transmissible spongiform encephalopathy or neurodegenerative disorder. Boom. There you are. This is, this is the base reality. That's you taking the red fucking pill. Now, no one, no one can tell you how that's going to turn out or how it's going to, or how it's going to go over the next 10 months. Okay. A year, two years, six months even. Okay. Because we've got to get into the winter months. The winter months have rolled round into the Southern hemisphere. And like the UK had, they suddenly got the military out on the streets. Now the military are there just to, just to lend a helping hand. Okay. But there's something else going on. 
it's this isn't this isn't a flu as his as his words are saying that's generally survivable but suddenly it's an incapacitating agent that can that can hit 20 30 percent of your of your uh, command forces that's a big hit to take in modern warfare when you've got s such sophisticated systems that need to that need to integrate and operate together <laughs> a, a battalion losing 20 to 30 percent gets shipped back from the front lines and they have to be patched up and get ready to be sent back and they have to be reserves to go forward but if you've been incapacitated at a population level okay and it's unpredictable in how it reacts with people and and they and they're going down the pathway because they they believed they believed that they could solve it with uh, this mrna technology and you got led you got led by bureaucrats who didn't understand the science and now boom here you are where suddenly we're, we're dealing with the consequences of allowing wokeism to penetrate into every crevice and institute that we had available to protect ourselves and it's full of Pufters, it's full of women, full of rad femme ideology, it's full of chinless wanks like him that wouldn't do anything and stand up and speak up when the time was right. And now all you're left with is people like me. So you're gonna have to fucking suck it up because that's it. That's all you fucking have right now. That's the only thing that's putting out anything approximating truth. Okay, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's all just the, the Jew. Okay, it's a lot more than that. Yes, there's a few more of them. Okay, and yes, it looks fucking suspect that the Ashkenazi have a have some sort of uh, uh, built-in tolerance towards this incapacitating agent, an incapacitating agent which will go for your brain and knock off twenty IQ points. And I think that's what I wanted to say about um, Yedin. Um, there's a bit in here where he talks about the lab leak, but he dismisses it. He dismisses it because he's trying to steer the conversation away from that. He's steering it to this idea of civil liberties. Great. I, I'm all for civil liberties and I don't want I don't want the machine coming for me. I'm putting my head right above the parapet and I've got three kids and a wife that I'm supposed to be looking after. OK. You're not in a good position right now. All the things that you've taken for granted are essentially it's like going up to a, a, a tree stump and realizing you can just put your finger through it because it's been eaten through by insects for decades. OK, or whatever else, fungi and bacteria, etc. All the institutes are sclerotic. They know it. The, the people in charge, the technocrats above Mike Yearden. OK, and Mike Yearden might be a white hat, might be might be but it's it's the it's the narrow focus okay and him not speaking about a broader picture because he for sure as hell is smart enough to understand where this technology would go and he won't discuss it because game theory tells you this is where you're at <laughs> 